Hey guys and girls, do you know what thermocline is? Do you know what thermocline is? You heard the word thermocline used in fishing? Thermocline is something that a lot of people, you ask somebody, you know what thermocline is? Oh yeah, I know what thermocline is. What is it? Uh, well, it's uh, got something to do with temperature. Well, of course it's got something to do with temperature. Thermocline is not complicated. It's a very simple deal. It is a three degree change in water temperature at a certain depth. And we have learned how to find that without even dropping a temperature gauge into the water. And we can do that very, very easily. And that's what we're gonna talk about today right here on Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube. Yeah. Oh, fish. There he is. Come here, baby, come here. Golly, he was swimming with that. I hope he didn't swallow that. It's a little one. Set my spot lock so I won't drift off so I make me another cast in there. I hope he didn't swallow that bait. I see a worm, so maybe he didn't. Oh, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Oh, he's not that little. Oh, he's got it down. Oh, Jimmy. I never felt that fish bite. Never felt him bite. I have a barbless hook on, which is good. <clears throat> But still, you gotta be super careful to unhook them even with a barbless hook. That just upsets me to no end. I don't have that happen very often. It'll usually will happen in the grass because that's the time, that's the time when, uh, don't bleed no, you guy. Be careful, if I ever get a hold of that hook, I'm gonna take it out, it's not gonna hurt anything at all. There we go. <laughs> That's a good way to start. Mm. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to worm fish a little bit. We might throw some spinner baits. Might throw, might throw some spinner baits. Jimmy Houston throwing a spinner bait? Oh my gosh, we better watch this. Uh, you know, we always throw some spinner baits. I don't care if there's ice on the water. We'll just let them slide across the top of it. But, uh, but we have a thermocline that's very, very shallow. And here in the summertime, and uh, we've got a 100 degree weather forecast in the next couple of days. It's cloudy today and it's pretty nice, high humidity. But it's really nice because we got a little breeze, we got a little cloud cover. I hit my spot lock, my boat turned right back around. I did that because I want to throw right back in the same place where I caught that fish. That's always a great thing to do. If you've got a trolling motor, it's got spot lock on it, hit that spot lock and it'll stop your boat. Because by the time I unhooked that fish, which took quite a while, I'd have drifted down there. But we're gonna be talking a lot about th Got him. Got him, about eight foot deep, nice fish, golly, nice fish. Good one, come here, baby. Go on, for a beautiful fish, come here, baby. Come here, baby, come here. Oh, get over here, yeah. <laughs> look at the color on that fish, isn't he beautiful? Look at his tail, something's eating his tail off. Look at that, look at the top of his tail. That's really something. There you go, Jimmy, that's the way you're supposed to hook him. I felt that one bite, nice, beautiful fish. Mm. What I was talking about a second ago, another factor that you don't really need to worry about too awful much, but we got to, for a while, we were actually checking the pH of the water. Now pH is of course alkaline and acid. Those of you that have swimming pools or water systems, you know how great it is and how you have to have pH balanced water. pH balance I think is seven or 7.2. Might be exactly seven, I'm not sure, I just don't remember. But uh, uh, been taking those pills they advertise on TV to help my memory. I can't remember what the name of them is, they advertise them on TV all the time. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, your pH in your water is very, very important. It's important in these, in these lakes out here also. And we used to, we got in a, uh, somebody figured that out, how important it was to the fish. And so we got in a situation where we were, you notice I hit my spot lock and I'm back here fishing that exact same spot. I missed a couple fish here and then caught that one. So I just set my boat right here on this spot and I'm gonna make several casts in here in case there's more fish in this one spot. Very important to do that. But, uh, but the pH is, is, is very, very important. And so we started looking for good pH because if we found good pH, we'd find fish at that depth. Another key thing to know how deep to fish. And uh, when we got to learning about the thermocline and, and found had locators where we could actually see the thermocline. Now you can drop a temperature meter down in the water. And as you drop it down watching where you see a three degree change in water temperature, you are, uh, you got a thermocline. And uh, your fish will mostly be above that thermocline. Well, we learned with the pH meter 
that the pH, the good pH and a pH climb, which is where you had a major change in the pH, uh, it might go from 7.1 to 7.3 or 7.4. And I don't, I don't remember the word you use for it, but it, it's, it's like it's not just a tiny deal. It's like 10 times every time you move up 7.1 to 7.2 is like 10 times more or 10 times less as, acid or alkaline, depending on which way it's going up or down. So it's very, very important. And when we found a major change, which we, caught, we just deemed a terminology, we called it a pH decline. That's when the pH would have a major change. Well, after a while, we got to noticing that that pH decline, the pH decline and the thermocline were about in the same spot. And they're very, very related to each other. And so what happened is since we learned we could see, just like I showed you on that locator, on that Garmin, you, you could see the, the, P, the thermocline if the pH climb was going to be right there beside it, there was no need to really drop things down in the water on a cable and drop them down to 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 feet or whatever to find out where the pH climb was, to find out where the thermocline was, because they related so closely to each other. And uh, so that's what you want to do. Just look for that thermocline. Don't worry about the pH climb. But that's another reason fish will not be down below it. And we're going to get in some deeper water as the day goes on. And, and I'll show you hopefully some fish. Well, I will show you some fish. Not hopefully. We always can see fish now on our locators with the forge facing sonar. But uh, I will show you some fish and show you how they all hang right above that, that thermocline. Uh, I'm more interested in catching them than I am anything else, but I want to show you that because it's very, very vital fishing during the summertime and the fall. You see where those are? Now those are at 10 foot. This thermocline is here is at 14 earlier, but you see all your fish? You see these fish right here? These fish right here or right above that thermocline. See fish out here on that grass? Now the reason this is moving is I've got this set on spot lock and my trolling motor's moving around is why our picture's changing. See these fish right here above the thermocline, these fish right here above the thermocline. That's a pretty decent sized bass, about a three pounder, and he's right out off the edge of where that grass is. And uh, there's like a fish down on the bottom. No, it's probably not a fish, it's a stump. But that's moving around, my trolling motor's moving a little bit, and that's why it's pointing at some trees, pointing off out this way now. You see no grass, but you see that thermocline? You see that thermocline? Now, you see no fish above it either, but that's, that's some submerged trees. Trees only go up to about six or eight foot of the top. Now there's those fish there. Now the reason that that's changing, now my trolling motor's facing over that way. See, it's facing the grass again. See where the fish are congregated? Congregated all between 10 and 14 foot. There he is. Come here, baby. I'm about to run over a big, oh, it's a nice fish. Nice fish. About to run over a big stump here, and I don't want to get on my spot where I caught that fish, because I want to throw in there again. One of the things you want to do on your spot lock when you punch it, make sure it clicks in. Be sure to look down there. Always make sure that it clicks in. Ooh, that's the biggest one I've caught so far. All right, here's the deal on fishing that pH and using your using the thermocline to fish. Do not fish, look at that fish, nice, big, beautiful fish. Do not fish below the level of that, that. So what you wanna do is like right now, I'm gonna look and see, look down there and see where I am. I think I'm in about 15, no, I'm in 12 foot of water. So I can fish all of, 12.3 is where I am right now. And that might be the top of the grass. I'm, I think I'm in a little bit deeper water than that. But catching all my fish on a hydra tail, a lucky strike hydra tail worm, you see that tail, it's got that little concave tail come around there. That's a brand new design in worms, and it's, it's a great design. This is just an amazing color to use. I, I threw in there and lost a fish, and I threw back in there, and I got one. The fish only hit it actually about six foot down. We'll see if maybe there might be several. I keep thinking I'll run into a place where there's four or five. It hadn't happened yet. But you want to keep your bait above it. Now, if you're fishing a plastic worm, Pay attention to that locator. If you get down below your thermocline level, you can fish that level still. There'll be a lot of fish there. They'll just be on top of it. But you don't let your bait down there. So if a plastic worm, we're fishing around the edge of the grass, we want to throw to the edge of the grass and, and let that bait fall six or eight feet. And then we want to start working a rod tip and just jig the rod up, let it fall. Make sure you're keeping your bait above that thermocline. Because once your bait drops below the fish, they're not going to bite it. They're not going to bite it. So you want to do a technique of sort of swim drop, uh, where you're, you're, you're pitching your bait out there, you're gonna let it drop about six foot, that's all I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna keep contact with it as I let it drop. I'm gonna let it drop about six foot, so if I get a bite, once I'm down, I think about six foot, you can count it down 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 if you want. It's probably dropping a rate of about a foot per second. If you wanna do that, that's fine. 
but uh, you let it go down about six foot and then you want to keep it at that level all the way back to the boat. So what I'm doing, I'm just barely jiggling my rod tip, just an inch or two up there, moving that rod tip and letting that bait fall. But I'm not letting it fall all the way to the bottom. I'm trying to keep it up above that thermocline. Now that takes some concentration, it takes some finesse, it takes some skill. But if you learn and you practice doing it, you'll be able to keep that above. And you're not swimming the bait. You're not swimming the bait. You're, 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 drop, you're dropping it and, and, and you putting the action on it with a rod tip. Occasionally you get in the grass like I did right there. That is coontail moss is what that is right there. That's where the fish are located in a lot. It's not good to eat. I've eaten it. It doesn't taste that great. <laughs> Golly, I got two bites right there. It might have been the same fish that bit it both times, but I hooked that first fish just a little bit before he came off. There's more than one in there. Yeah. That fish was about six foot deep. So I caught a couple about six foot deep. I'm going to try to concentrate a little bit above that level. Of course, now I can see the fish on my locator. I'm, oh, another nice one. I know about how deep they are. Worm's way up there, so he's probably hooked properly. Probably didn't swallow it. These are really nice fish, I gotta tell you. These are incredibly great summertime fish. Come here, baby. Get there. Hooked right in the lower. Ah, Jimmy. <laughs> you can bleed on that, it's no big deal. It's not carpet. <clears throat> Just rinse that out with a water hose. That's a nice four pound bass right there. Beautiful bass. Beautiful bass. Biggest one I've caught so far. <laughs> That's some good sugar. Yeah, buddy. It's six inch hydro worm. A hydro worm. A six inch hydro worm. It's purple with green flake. Call it a June bug color. Purple with green flake. Kobe, since he's bought the company, has named a lot of our colors pretty cool names. Like Whiskey Girl and Moonshine, all kinds of cool, cool names. I can't remember what he calls June bug. Just cool is all. It won't help you catch any more fish. You can call it June bug. But I've got a Texas rig. I've got a really light sinker on. Now, when you have this situation of a thermocline up pretty shallow, you want a light sinker so you can feel it hit the top of the grass. And, and you can feel that grass and, and it doesn't sink down through it. Once it gets down through it, you know, you're probably not going to catch much. And I'm, I'm skin hooking that. That means that once I hook the worm, I stuck all the way through the worm and I come back, my point is out. You see that? I want to just come in here and simply push that up a little bit and skin hook that point. That makes a totally weedless worm. You want it to be perfectly straight, totally weedless worm, and a light slip sinker. Now, most people that's fishing 12 foot deep or thereabouts, 10, 12 foot deep, most people are going to use a, a little bit heavier slip sinker, but I've got a, a light slip sinker on there, an eighth ounce slip sinker, because I want to be able to keep it above that grass. I want to get down, I feel the grass, I want to start swimming. I want to swim and I don't want it dropping down below that 12 foot thermocline level and more than likely a pH cline right there at the same depth. And the majority of the fish right now that I'm catching are hitting that thing, hitting that thing about six or eight feet deep. There he is, there he is, there he is. Another nice one. They're all about the same size, about two and a half to four pounds, which is a pretty good neighborhood to live in. <laughs> about two and a half to four pounds. Pretty doggone good neighborhood to live in. Oh, come on, buddy. Come here. Now that last one was hooked right in the bottom through the bottom lip. This one is hooked right through the top lip. Do you know why that is? Do you know why that is? If you do, comment and tell me, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a clue how that is. So much fun. <laughs> and down under those bass, those bluegill, was a big bass. Got my spot lock start set. This one acts like a bigger than anything I've caught. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Definitely bigger than anything I've caught. Oh, yeah. Right under all those bluegill. You know why he's right under those bluegill? He looked like a big buffet line to him. Looked like a big buffet buffet line to him. Oh, and a little big one to boat flip there. I boat flip those all kinds of tournaments. I see guys get down. So many of the guys in tournaments nowadays, it's good technique. Look at that. It's a good five or six pound bass right there. Kissing a girl there, Jimmy. 
So many of the guys in tournaments nowadays use spinning rods. They got 20 pound or 30 pound test braid on there. And then they've got a lighter line piece of fluorocarbon and that's great. And you might get a few more bites that way, but they also have a situation a lot of times when I've got this worm bit down, which is probably only about five inches long, but I'm gonna try to catch one more on it. Bite off just a little bit more. This worm's got a lot of salt in it. Mm. Come down here, right where you, right where that, that hook bends, just like that. Hold your thumb right there. Go straight through. When it's almost through, turn up a little bit at an angle. That turns your hook up. Now your hook is laying right on there. Just come push that up a little bit. The skin hook and your worm yet is perfect. That big hydro tail. Now instead of the, that worm's a lot shorter than it was when I started. So I'm gonna throw and let it drop right by that tree, about six or eight feet, and get it on, hit, get hits on the way down. Hit my spot lock. Stay right here where I am. Some of these fish got a tendency, it might be real big ones. I mean, it might be real big ones. This one's not. I don't know though, he might be bigger than I think he is. I thought it was about a two pounder. That's, yeah, that's about what he is, two and a half. He's just strong. Oh, maybe three and a half. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> maybe three and a half. <laughs> now that fish, Look at there, look at there. Somebody's caught him not too long ago. Had him right here in this whole side right there. And that's not even healed up. It's actually not been too long ago since it's bleeding. Somebody might have caught him in the last day or two. Nice three and a half, pushing four, 312, 314, I'd say. And uh, I'm not gonna cook, kiss you on your hook side. Why not? That's what mama does. Mama gives me a kiss on my uh, ouchie. No, that's a bass. Probably swallowed it. I thought it was a bluegill. Not a big one. I hope he didn't swallow it. I haven't had one swallow it since the very first one this morning. Come here, baby. Whoop, that went my worm. <laughs> that's about the smallest one I've caught, and that's a nice pound and a half fish right there. My mm. worm took off somewhere. I don't know where it went. I think I will invest in a new hydro tail worm. Six inch hydro tail worm, lucky strike. I swear that looks like an eight inch worm to me. I'm just saying, that looks like an eight inch worm. Lord of mercy. Glad I'm not a carpenter. I have everything measured wrong. I'm not a carpenter, I'm a fisherman. Praise the Lord. Where'd I catch that fish? Over there, wasn't it? Hang in there with us, clouds. We enjoy you. All right, if you'll remember to double your fishing line, everything gets real easy. Double your fishing line like I've done here. Put the double line through the eye of the hook. If your eye of the hook is small, you can run it through there singly and turn around and run it back in. It's a pretty good chunk of line. You got the line laying on the index finger of your left hand. You want to go over that finger. My, this line is so kinky. This is fluorocarbon line. It's kinky. Come underneath that. Now you got both lines over the finger, underneath your index finger. Simply wrap that four times. One, two, three, four. This is the end I put through the eye of the hook. Come up through that little loop that's on your finger. Wet your line a little bit. Cinch that thing down easy. Pull on the main line real hard. Pull on the single line real hard. And then put your finger in the loop that you went through, pretty your knot up. Now you've got a good, pure, 100% knot. Take your little $3 cutters you got from Bass Pro, cut that loop and that tag off, and you got a good, pure, 100% knot. Now, oh, I got a old sneaky steak. Let's try old sneaky steak here. We've been fishing a hydro tail. Let's take old sneaky steak. Now this is a, a long 10 inch worm right here. Yeah, baby, that's 10 inches, maybe 12, I don't know. I come up here and rig it the exact same way. This was just laying in the boat, one I was using the other day, same color. Probably gonna definitely catch some fish on it also. 
That big old curly tail looks like a snake in the water. Big baits equal big fish. We know that for a fact. I need to put me some new line on here. I've had this line on for a while. I'm gonna just run this. I wanna show you one more little technique. Now I'll save that for next time. I'll just tell you the technique right now. Another thing you can do out here is a couple things that work good when the fish are in this situation here. And I'm gonna tell you, if you've got a lake that's got trees in it like this, if you tournament fish, not many people are gonna be out here doing this that we're doing right now. They're not gonna be out here fishing fish that are suspended above the thermocline in those trees. This worm technique works good, a jig technique works good. Swimming a jig through that, put that jig down there about seven or eight feet, swim it through the top of those trees. Topwater bait works good. A big topwater bait or a buzz bait coming over the top of them. Keep in mind the fish are not below that 12 foot. Also something like a, an American Original Deep Smoothie crankbait. Uh, if you could take that crankbait and get one that runs about eight foot, six or eight foot, a deep smoothie, it's just perfect on that. Again, you can run that through here and catch fish, but keep in mind the whole trick is keeping your bait above that 12 foot level. Yes. Boy, I was swimming that bait when I got that one. Definitely swimming that bait. Go crazy. Not a real big one, he is crazy. You know, it's kind of funny, I've been catching a little bit, that's not bad, a little bit smaller fish out here out of these trees and these treetops than I was fishing on the edge of the grass. A little bit smaller fish. That's a male fish right there. And a uh, nice one, not a bad fish. Caught that one on the Sneaky Snake. Sneaky Snake is one of my very favorite Lucky Strike lures. It's an old bait. I hope they don't quit making it. I know a guy, I might be able to keep them, get them to keep making it. I done missed him again! Ah! Ah! <laughs> I got him. That's the stupidest fish in the whole lake. That is the, it's a big one too. It's the one, same one. Yeah, it's a big one, yeah. <laughs> that is the stupidest fish in the entire lake. You know what the deal was, it was probably, you know, I've been saying all day, I've been talking about, let me set my spot lock. I've been talking about maybe finding three or four in a spot or catching a tree that had seven or eight in them. Because I had the fish hooked and he come off. And that's a big male, big giant male. <laughs> Look at that, look at that. And he came off and I just wound my, look, look at my worm, that's what's left of my worm. That's a not eight inch nail. <laughs> that was that big stinky snake. I'm gonna go back to my hydro, hydro tail worm, if I can find them. Hydro tail. <clears throat> These are old packages. stupid fish and I got a bite and uh, well he come up and hit it on top of the water when I was lifted out of the water he dang near jumped in the boat you ever had one jump in the boat I've actually had fish jump in the boat fishing rice paddy reservoirs I've had to sneak in carp those Asian carp jump in I'm, I set my spot lock because I'm gonna fish in that tree <laughs> through the bait in a tree dang I got a fish the land the bait landed in the water. I was so mad for throwing it in a tree, but it fell in the water out of the tree. I thought I went over a limb and it took off to the side. And it's a big old fish. I mean, it's a big old fish, I think. I don't know really what, how big it was. <laughs> it felt like a big old fish. I thought I was hung in a tree. I was about to break my rod over my knee. Then my bait took off sideways. I didn't even think my bait was in the water. So I'm gonna throw right under that tree again Except this time I did like I intended to do, and let it drop and shake it, and let it drop and shake it, and nothing bites it. You know why? Because the fish took off that way, so he ain't where I throw. Well, there he is right there. <laughs> oh, it's a big one. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. That's such a pretty fish. Oh, look at that fish. That's surely not the fish I had on a minute ago. Look at that fish. Did you swallow the hook? No, you didn't. He's hooked perfectly. Okay. All right. Look at that big mouth. All right, guys and girls. 
That is exactly how you fish the thermocline. For fishing the thermocline, the main key thing to remember is when you see it on your locator, do not, do not, do not fish down below it. Make sure you're fishing above that thermocline. Usually about the last, if you like to say the water is 12 foot, the thermocline is 12 foot, 8 to 12 foot is the key deal. Around 2 or 3 foot above the thermocline seems to be where the most of the fish are. And that's a big one right there. Thermocline, very, very important, particularly summertime bass fishing. Go get you some sugar. Man.